some types of transport aircraft to which you as a crewman may be assigned. As a crew member, you have many responsibilities, but no responsibility is more important than being prepared for in-flight emergencies. Those emergencies occurring over water are among the most serious, for a ditching may result. We're going to demonstrate a ditching situation using this particular type of aircraft but the procedures shown can be applied with only minor differences to any other land-based aircraft, conventional or jet. Although emergency equipment is installed by the maintenance crew before takeoff, it's still your responsibility to see that there's enough equipment aboard for all and that it's properly stowed. Life jackets, exposure suits, and rafts. All should be out of the way during routine flight, yet easily accessible if needed. And the condition of every item should be carefully checked. Before takeoff, or before getting over water, carefully brief the passengers on emergency procedures, use of equipment, and exits to be used in case of ditching. They should know where the life jackets are kept, how to put them on, and how to use them. Point out the location of the rafts and warn everyone that under no condition will they inflate them or the life jackets inside the cabin. You've had sound basic training, but keep yourself prepared. Whether at home or in flight, study the material on this subject. For example, the Inter-Service Manual Aircraft Emergency Procedures Over Water. It gives information on ditching procedures for your aircraft under all kinds of conditions. Above all, study the ditching checklist provided for the position to which you are assigned. It lists your most essential duties. Know them well. But during an emergency, you may have no time to read instructions. Engine problem. This could develop into that in-flight emergency you've been preparing for. Number two engine is on partial power, and number four has gone completely out. Three hours of overwater flying ahead. Your aircraft commander knows what to do. First, he alerts you, giving his best estimate of what lies ahead and discusses ditching preparations. You again examine all of your ditching procedures and plans for preparation in the cabin. Fire. The situation becomes serious. Prepare to ditch. You have about 30 minutes. These are the words of your aircraft commander. Then he warns and reassures the passengers. One of the greatest human fears is fear of the unknown. But an aircraft commander knows from experience that people usually cooperate if they're told exactly what they have to face and what's expected of them. In some emergencies, there may not be time for complete ditching preparation. When this occurs, it's up to you to see that the passengers have on life jackets, seat belts fastened, and are properly braced. You are the commander's representative in the cabin. Now you'll apply your training in handling people. And you'll be expected to act independently and without delay. The aircraft commander and his flight deck personnel will have plenty to do right now. Sending out distress calls, handling the aircraft, and getting ready to ditch. While these preparations are going on in the cockpit, you're busy with the passengers. 
Be on the alert for passengers who show signs of undue anxiety. Take immediate steps to prevent these situations from getting out of hand. If one of these loses control and becomes hysterical, it can upset others who are emotionally unstable. Another example is the passenger who is paralyzed with fright. If you've learned how to handle people with tact and understanding, you'll soon have things under control. Be persuasive in getting him back to normal before it's too late. For one person inert with fear can retard the whole procedure when it's time to evacuate the aircraft. While the passengers are putting on the life jackets, check these items. Check the passenger's clothing it should be warm, but not bulky. Any other objects in pockets which might cause injury on impact should be disposed of. See that all neckties are taken off. Eyeglasses should be removed and put in a safe place on the owner's person. In order not to damage life rafts, women should take off high-heeled shoes. In fact, any type of shoes with leather heels or cleats should be removed. When the life jacket is on, it should be adjusted for the best fit. Remind the passenger how to use the jacket, and again, warn of the danger of inflating it inside the cabin. If time and space permit, move all passengers forward of the main cabin door. If the aircraft should break up on impact, it will most likely occur aft of the main cabin door. In reseating passengers, here are some general rules to follow. Wherever possible, place able-bodied people with handicapped or older passengers and seat them near a suitable exit. Try to keep families together and see that young children remain with parents. Infants should be held in the arms of parents in rear-facing seats. See that men sit by women. Those who seem abnormally anxious should have emotionally stable companions. An able-bodied and experienced man should be placed beside each emergency exit not assigned to crew members. Remove the safety wire and tell him how the mechanical lock works but warn him not to open the exit until the aircraft comes to rest after landing. The passengers should be shown how to brace themselves to withstand the dangerous deceleration forces caused by impact with the rough sea. Here's the procedure for rear-facing seats. First, bring the seat to upright position. Then strap the seat belt tightly across the hips. Grasp the armrest and brace firmly against the seat back. Spread the feet and rest them solidly on the floor. With forward facing seats, tighten the seat belt. With a pillow to protect the face, lean forward as far as possible and place arms cradling the pillow firmly on the knees. This is one of several recommended positions. On passenger flights, do not jettison anything from the cabin. The few pounds disposed of will not compensate for the hazards involved in opening a door to throw them out. Loose items can become lethal missiles on impact. Stow heavy items and secure them safely. On cargo flights, of course, the cabin load is heavy and bulky, and as much load as possible should be jettisoned. Life rafts are heavy and bulky. Select dependable men to assist you in handling them. If not easily accessible, reposition them well ahead of ditching. When space is available, place the rafts forward of the main entrance door so they won't be lost if the tail section breaks off. All rafts should be secured with quick-release tie-downs. Be sure the passengers know their escape routes for getting out of the aircraft. Also, remind them of the alternate route to use if their primary exit becomes blocked. The aircraft commander continues to reassure the passengers and keeps them posted on the situation. We will land on the water in about 10 minutes. 
A search and rescue plane is due to arrive in a few minutes, and several surface ships are on their way. We will touch the water two, possibly three times before coming to rest. I wish to stress again the importance of remaining braced in your seats until the aircraft comes to complete stop on the water. I shall advise you when we are about one minute from touchdown. Advise the aircraft commander when all is ready in the cabin. In the cockpit, preparations have been completed for the ditching. The aircraft has been depressurized and fuel not needed for the final approach has been jettisoned. A final ditching position report is sent and the emergency key is actuated so that radio bearings can be taken as long as possible. It's your responsibility to see that the emergency exits are not opened until after the aircraft comes to rest. Your attention, please. We are now one minute from touchdown. Brace yourselves for impact. The moment the aircraft stops, jettison the main cabin door and open the side emergency exits. Get the rafts near the exit for launching. Take a firm hold on the retaining line that prevents the raft from being lost when cast overboard and loop it around some anchor point. As the raft goes out, but not before, pull the CO2 lanyard. Assign a passenger to get into the raft as it begins to inflate to straighten it out and prevent the lines from strangling it. At the same time rafts are being launched through the wing emergency exits, Flaps tearing away on impact may leave dangerous jagged edges. If this should happen, launch the raft in a safer area out toward the wingtip. Do not wait for a raft to completely inflate before launching the next one, for some life raft failures are possible. See that the passengers release their safety belts and move toward the assigned emergency exit. Non-swimmers should inflate their life jackets as they leave the aircraft. Keep the passengers moving out of the cabin. Caution them to get directly into the raft, not into the water, where they may suffer from intense exposure or meet death by drowning. As they land in the raft, they should scramble out of the way to avoid being trampled. Passengers hesitant about getting into a raft should be forced firmly out of the exit so the evacuation is not retarded. As the aircraft empties, check all seats for dazed or injured passengers. Passengers coming through the wing exit should use the escape rope or the raft retaining line as a handhold. Lash together the released rafts to keep the survivors together in one compact group. A raft inadvertently cast off can be slowed down by putting over the sea anchor and using hands as paddles. Anyone having to jump into the water will often find it impossible to catch up with drifting rafts. Therefore, do not cast off until the rafts are loaded. If you miss the raft and have to swim to it, do not inflate the jacket. An inflated jacket will make swimming almost impossible. So inflate it only as a last resort to help keep you afloat. Use the boarding station when entering a raft from the water. We've shown you a successful ditching. If you're completely prepared by training and study, and cooperate with your aircraft commander and your fellow crew members. There is no reason why any emergency you're involved in will not have an ending as successful as this one. <laughs>